because we know artists. Mm-hmm. We're lazy and we do lots of drugs and we don't like authority. So <laughs> the fact that speak for yourself, man. Do, do you know what I mean? Though? I love cops it's and like- don't like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome. Episode 15 of the Slooniverse podcast. We're really excited. We were just saying that this is Chris and I's first time back in a while. We took like a month hiatus, but also we got all the switching power and we're really excited. Welcome, Mateo. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I also took a month off. I haven't done stand up in a month. I'm back doing it this week. So it's weird to be back on. It's weird to be doing things. It is. It's like we went through like a COVID kind of 1.5. Everyone Kinda. took like a two month break for Christmas. I mean, at least in the city, it was absolutely pandemonium. I want to quickly rant because the way we met is very, my favorite word, serendipitous. Okay. And so let me just run it through. First of all, you were on Flagrant. Mm-hmm. And so I'd never heard of you before that. And I watched the podcast. I was like, all right, that was really funny. You know, I like enjoyed it. That same week, I went to the cellar and saw you. I was like, oh, shit, that's the guy from Flagrant. Like, Mateo, you were the first one in the lineup. Oh, God, super, I hate going first, but go ahead. Super funny night. Like, we, I remember we, I told you that when you were drawing here the other um, time. And then a couple weeks went by, and my roommate somehow found you, and he has a huge crush on you. And he was like, oh, he's an amazing artist also. Like, look at all this other stuff he posts. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like, what a talented dude. And then, like, literally the week after, this is all maybe in a month span, Zach hit me up. He's like, yo, dude, I know this, like, comedian he's also like a really great drawer i'm like hmm that must be mateo like can he come by i'm like hell yeah and then you came by so it was kind of very weird how that worked out all the threads that were pulled yeah yeah uh it's kind of even weird how i met zach i just walked through the park one day and i saw this hot guy drawing people and i was like what the hell is going on (laughs) and at first you know because like when you walk through washington square park you're always like well who, you know, it's like, jo- I'll give you a joke for a dollar, whatever. But then I saw his drawings and it was like, oh, wait, you're really, yeah. really good. And he was kind of shy at first. And I said, are you looking to get into drawing? Because at that time, I had just left my job working as a storyboard artist mm-hmm. full time. And I said, are you looking to get into work? And he was like, yeah, I'm trying to do this or that. And I said, well, if you need help, I can like send your portfolio to my agents or. That's so nice. Just whomever. a random guy. Yeah, because it just I just I know that. Str- I mean, I remember being younger and trying to make it as an artist and putting my my art card everywhere and trying to do portraits of i just i just know the hustle and i know the hustle as a comedian Mm -hmm. so i was like this guy's actually really talented and if he's sitting in fucking washington square park which is just inviting hep c i was like you know (laughs) you've got to really want to do it and then we of course became friends and started drawing together and it's just it's also nice to like to hang out with him and also to come to your uh studio to do figure drawing Mm because i just haven't done it in so long it was like an awakening i was like oh that's right i used to be an artist yeah that's crazy we're gonna get into it zach is amazing shout out zach but so like can we run it back all the way because for people who don't know i mean people will know you're probably gonna be the biggest person on our podcast but (laughs) you're kind of like a crazy person you speak five languages you were a storyboard like professional illustrator amazing painter we'll pull things up you're a professional stand-up, very successful. You do opera. What else do you do? You do modeling. Well, let's not say modeling. Okay, let's but just it's say, just like, <laughs> you, like... There's some photographers <laughs> that wanted to sleep with me, and we took some nice photos. I mean, but there's some nice there's, photos. But there there's are some, some nice great photos. photographers, though, that... Because uh, there was a week... There was a, there was a time in my life where I was just doing these photo shoots with these photographers okay. in New York. Because they are really, really fun. Very thoughty, very Instagram-y, like, Yeah, just ago. like in your, like, little long johns. Not even. Just your tidy whities Oh, Naked, yeah, and uh, but there's very few like Daniel Sung Lee and Sam Waxman are the most incredible mm. photographers. So, if anyone is listening, please go follow them because they Shout are out. incredible. But yeah, I had a lot of fun doing those photos. But, but can we run back because, like, this amalgamation of your person, it's like I feel like when you walk down the streets of New York, you're just like looking out, down from Mount Olympus at like all of these mortals. Like, I don't the feel immense that way. talent. I mean, it's like you're not gonna brag, I'll brag for you, but it's pretty oh. crazy. So, what started first? <laughs> Drawing, drawing absolutely and yeah. you went to i have a couple notes on here right <laughs> but you started you started opera actually before that like 15 and then so, started painting yeah so i mean so kind of my the backstory is my mother is a, a brilliant illustrator mm-hmm. and artist and i think it's genetic because she never sat and taught us 
here's how you draw, here's how you do. But it just, I don't know, it just sort of inside of you. And my mother is probably a better artist than I am. Mm. But being Italian and Mexican and you, you just have kids and you become a wife. And I don't think she had the same um, drive as I did where I was like, I've got to make it. You know? Yeah. But as a kid, we were always nurtured by her to have fun by drawing. And I would just spend all of my life drawing I would go through a ream of paper a week. Mm. I was like this neurotic child and drawing, 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 drawing. And we would do claymation. And my brother was very creative. He's now a, like one of the high up creatives for Apple, like doing. Oh, really? Did, yeah. Design for them. And um, but we would do like claymation, animation, post-it animation. Uh, I would storyboard. I would do comic books. I mean, my entire Life was drawing, but I never did art in high school okay. because I, st- I wanted to perform and I couldn't get into theater because I wasn't old enough. And I remember this girl, Ashley Stein, was like, well, we're looking for people on show choir. Can you sing? And I never thought of myself as a singer, but I was like, sure, I can sing. And I sang and they were like, you have a, a natural voice. And as I was doing choir, my teacher pulled me aside. He's like, no, you have a very good voice. You should be studying with someone to really capture you know, what you have and to let it grow. And I started with this teacher named Nick Falco and he taught me opera and like little operettas, but mainly like how to do embellishments and breathing and all that kind of boring technique stuff. But um, I just had a very natural gift for singing. And then I wanted to sing, but I didn't want to go to, I, I didn't, I wasn't comfortable in musical theater environments. And then I didn't do art. So I just went to, I, I wasn't even gonna go to college cause I didn't go to, I barely showed up to high school. Yeah, I mean, I hated really? high school. Yeah. And this was in Chicago? Mm-hmm. Okay. Arlington Heights, for those wondering. And um, so I did, to make my mother happy, I did one semester of community college at Harper in the suburbs of Chicago. And my teacher happened to be also a teacher at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. And after day one, he saw my drawings and he was like, can I speak to you? And mm-hmm. I was like, sure. He's like, you are a very talented artist and i said thanks i was like this is the first art class i've ever i never did art in high school and he was like you absolutely should be going to the art institute of chicago which to me i was like that's like i'm not even gonna go to college like that's impossible yeah and that's the big one i know one of my buddies went there it's beautiful it's like the big one of the top i th- say like big fives of yeah, art schools of art in the schools. country yeah and so he to his credit i don't know i mean i yeah there's so many times in life where people do put their hand out to you and you just have to grab back And I think a lot of people don't. And this was a time that I did. And I mean, I had no other prospects in my future. Nothing. Really? Because I just had nothing. I was like, well, if I can just work at Whole Foods and make enough money to live in the city, I'll be happy. So you're just like dicking around as a kid at this point. This is... Completely. Before comedy, before anything, anything. This is like younger. Yeah. Yeah, This I'm 20... No, I was... 19, I was 18. And how old are you now? 26, 27? Now? Okay. I'm 35. Girl, I wish. Actually, no, I'm (laughs) done with my 20s. Thank God they're over. Really? Um, I hated them. But... uh, yeah, he, he helped me develop. I did five big drawings mm-hmm. and we did this thing called IDO Day where you go to the Art Institute of Chicago and it's the portfolio day. So you right, 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 yeah, wait yeah. in line with all these people mm-hmm. and there's like a it's like American Idol. There's like a <laughs> row of judges and then they say yes or no. And of course, I'm Italian. So it was me, my mom, my brother, my cousins, my, you know, it was like there was like you got the 12 team. of us. Yeah. And um I went in line and I'm just watching everyone. No, 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 no. People leaving, crying. Crazy. And I, I, it was insane. And I remember I just put down my drawing and I'll never forget the woman. She was blonde, tall and thin. And she stopped and she looked at my drawing. And then she like called over another teacher. <laughs> and then they both looked at my drawing. And they were like, they, like, then they all started huddling and talking. And then they signed this thing and... Put it down, and it was like you're accepted into the school of the artist. Yes, wow. I'm so emotional thinking about it now because it changed my life. That's a crazy situation. And I remember my mother crying because she just couldn't believe, like you know, I, I maybe there was a part of her that felt like her passion as an artist was never going to happen, and maybe not for me also. And so like this sort of uh, this hand me down of this talent mm. was going to actually be applied to yeah. something. And I just remember going to the art studio of Chicago, and it was like. I had to catch up on everything. I didn't know how to use charcoal. I'd never mm. painted. I'd never. <laughs> yeah, this is like, yeah, you're, you're given like a technique, a, a, a system that but right. you're just doing it for fun. I was doing it for fun. Mm-hmm. And I was surrounded by a lot of stuck up art kids you yeah. know, who think they're so great. But I remember absorbing. I was a sponge. I remember thinking I'm going to push my talent to its limit. And I was obsessed. I would we had seven hour painting classes. I would paint all day for seven hours. 
get on a train, go home, work. I was working at Blick mm-hmm. at the time. I'd finish at Blick, go home, paint till four o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. in my room, get maybe three hours of sleep, wake up, get on the train, go do the same thing the next day. It's so funny because my my path was like opposite. And I feel like you're like a lot of kids, like they want to become ours or or maybe you're you're more different. I'm more similar. Like I was kind of self-taught and loved it. And I went to university and I was older. And then I was like, okay, I want to be an artist and applied to Parsons. And then it was like terrible. You know, there mm. was no painting. There was no drawing. It was mm. so rudimentary. It was like, I wanted to be a fine artist and it wasn't for me. And then I went to an atelier and that's where I kind of, you know, got my heart thumping. Yeah. But like, I feel like a lot of kids are like, you know, they want to become artists and they want to go to art schools, but it seems like you were, that was like a situation where it was like really perfect and like actually worked out it and wor- you got inspired and. Yeah. And I'm also just, I am a hard worker. I remember mm-hmm. thinking to myself, I remember taking storyboarding classes on purpose because I thought if I leave here, I have to make it as an artist. And mm-hmm. I remember my fashion illustration teacher, Steve Miller, who's incredible. And I think anyone who wants to learn how to draw the human body should take fashion illustration classes. You said that to me when you're right. I'm sure people think it's misogynist. No, it really breaks down the human body in a way that simplifies it that I will forever be grateful to Steve Miller. Um, But he said you can make money as a storyboard artist. And so then I started developing a storyboard portfolio and then mm. i went to italy for yeah five can we months. talk about that slow down slow sure down, sorry i'm just remembering everything. yeah i know <laughs> it's the flood and now i tell dick jokes yeah <laughs> <laughs> because did you work storyboard after chicago or through chicago through chicago and then how did because that's like well could, i don't want to speak for you but to categorize that was like illustration mm-hmm. and then italy was like painting mm-hmm so at, what was that transition so at saic the school of the Institute of chicago mm-hmm. you have no major so you just pick the classes you want to do, which is can be both beneficial and can destroy I didn't know you. That. That's interesting. Yeah, and there's no grades. No, you know they're so artsy fartsy. I remember the only <laughs> no grades. No grades. Everything is subjective, right? So it's pass fail. And I remember this is how much of an art school I went to. Is that the only rule they had when I entered SAIC that we have a new rule this year: no bodily fluids allowed on your paintings. I was like, got it. So like David Cho, it just I, p- p- uh, piss Christ. Um, <laughs> so I was doing half um, uh, f- uh, figure painting in mm-hmm. oil, the alla prima method with uh, my teachers, Marion Krishka and Dan Gustin. Okay, so you were doing painting there. Painting and then uh, simultaneously also doing fashion illustration and storyboarding. Oh, yeah. So and animation. So it was it. It served each other well and then sometimes it didn't like i was going too fast for painting and then like doing too much detail for illustration mm. like it wasn't or for animation it wasn't it didn't always combine because animation's about cheating and oil paintings about dealing with what's in front of you so sometimes they worked against each other but i had a great teacher named dan gustin who did these courses in italy at this school called the university of illustration and painting in umbria italy and the umbria. Credits, umbria umbria and all the credits went to saic and cool. he said you have to come obviously i'm italian i speak italian mm-hmm. he was like it would be great for you so italian <laughs> italiano i know my <laughs> chicago accent so horrible so i i moved to italy for like four months i think Wow. And I lived in a convent. It was an old... The town had only 200 people. Jeez. And it was on a tall hill. It's called Monte Castello di Vibio. And um, they... they uh, there was maybe like 12 of us in school. And Lale Westfield, who's an amazing comic book illustrator, if you don't know who she is, so. she went to that school with me. We went to SAC together. And I love her. And everyone should look her up. She's an incredible artist. We, we were like... We needed each other because we would... We did about, I would say, over a hundred paintings that summer. That's so awesome. We would just paint everything and anything. Was there like a so there was an institution in this small town, or mm-hmm. was it just led by a teacher that like kind of finessed it all for it, the program? It, it was a program that was an institution, but because Italy's so old, the only space they had in this small town was at the old convent. Okay. So there was like maybe maybe twelve of us or ten of us at this school, and um, we would wake up at seven, have our coffee, and then. I have our food and then we would go paint till 12, come back, eat lunch, go paint from one to five and then relax, whatever, and then have dinner mm. and then drink wine the rest of the night. That sounds like a dream. It, it was a dream. Yeah, I did. I did. A, I did only a three week like demo through the artists students league, you know, the little atelier on 57th. Mm-hmm. And I went to the Florence Academy of Art and mm. that was just like I was just like bricked up with just inspiration, like 
It was the most amazing atelier. And when you see, like, not only the paintings, like, because the Hank students' works, like the Wall of Fame, or like they like to, but just like the studio spaces and the 12 easels set up with this crazy, beautiful stage. And you're just in Italy. I was just like, what? And I could totally do that for the rest of my life. Like, that's like my literal plan B. Like, if all this doesn't work, and I love this, and I love to, like, whatever, but, like, I could totally lock myself for four years and just, like, paint and become just, like, a machine because it's just so fun. And I, it's so fun I to improve, about you know? It. Like, yeah. the whole idea of, like, and, like, I'd love to talk about this because Alaprima is, like, very, it's, like, sketching. It's, like, very, you direct. know, direct and, like, it's, like, a dance and, like, you could still be super technical, but it's, like, it's way different than, like, uh rendered out three week giant composition full figure blah 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 using different layers and glazing um but i i also love that you know it's like there's like this creative aspect of art for me like this stuff but then there's like the traditional oil painting which is like way more just like technical training chris i've probably said this a million times i sound like a broken record but that's how like i kind of delineate it and i love both mm. um and let me just touch on something because I actually disagreed with something you said before sure. when you started this idea of genetics oh, and, and it, art. art. Mm. I hate when people say, you're such a naturally born, talented artist. Mm. I'm like, eat shit, kick mm. rocks. <laughs> if you worked and trained as much as I did for five, six years, you would probably be at the level as me. So mm. I don't really believe in natural talent. What I believe in is like, natural enthusiasm and passion mm. that drives you to train and be better i disagree what do you think okay and i the way i, I disagree Get with out. you is there, yeah can you imagine <laughs> well this is this is why because i think that think of it for in terms of singing mm -hmm. right so you can now look anyone who has natural talent obviously i also studied and worked hard and you know it wasn't like i was like i'm talented i'm a prodigy and then that was it like no it requires so much work and technique and you know a lot of mistakes but if you take singing for example you anyone can train with the best teacher in the world with the best singers in the world with the best education for the rest of their life they'll never sound like whitney houston <laughs> because whitney or mariah he, well i love mariah but we never got but <laughs> but but and i love mariah carey and mariah carey mariah carey is a rare rare talent I know, it's but decent. but i'm talking like Whitney, when she sings the national anthem, there's a thing on YouTube. It's like, who has the best national anthem? And they have like 15 singers and you go through it. The second you get to Whitney Houston, your body mm -hmm. literally stops. Mm -hmm. There literally is something born within certain people that I'm not saying isn't. It doesn't mean that you're not capable of being a great artist if you've got passion. Yeah. for it. But some people, John Singer Sargent, yep. everyone challenged John Singer Sargent, whether you think his artwork is boring or not, that man was physically born to paint okay rebuttal i completely agree with that with the singing and i also think that's in the category of like athletics like mm. if me or you or chris trained to play basketball i use this exact I would analogy cry. yeah but if you trained really hard for 10 years you would probably yeah. be pretty damn good yeah but you would never be kevin durant that's or right lebron james so there's that like physical aspect i feel like singing is in that category but i always compare and this might just be me beating the dead horse and i'm too stuck in that opinion no please i like that you painting is like it's like literally a language um like if you just wanted to learn japanese like there's no physical attributes that will prevent you from learning that language it's literally just memorization training and experience yeah and so i'm not saying for like creating stuff and being super creative and like whatever but like if you just want to learn to draw a portrait realistically naturalistically I think anyone can do that with enough training ability. Maybe it will take some longer. Maybe it will take some shorter. But that's sort of what I mean. No, and I agree to that point. Mm -hmm. In the same vein where I was saying you can, anyone who learned, wants to learn how to sing unless you're tone deaf, which is like an actual ear thing, um, <laughs> you can sing. Yeah. I mean, we know plenty of great singers, you know, in opera, classical music, Broadway, mm -hmm. who are wonderful, efficient, great singers who have emotional capacity to to. Uh, you know, invoke the meaning of these songs or whatever, but then there's just the few. Yeah, no, I, where I think you're, you're like, right. where you're like, oh, like when you listen to Whitney Houston sing or Maria Callas, or when you see a John Singer Sargent or Joaquin yeah. Soroya portrait, you're looking at it and you're like, oh, there's something 
Yeah, they're innately internalizing something that not other people are doing. I think I agree with that. But yeah, yeah, I just... that For the only reason where I'm like, fuck you. Like, I worked hard for this. When people are just like, I can't even draw a stick figure. Have you ever tried? That's asshole. I mean, I'm also with you on that. Where like, I hope you don't think that what I'm saying is... I'm not trying to... I just thought it was a good conversation. It's a great conversation. I'm I'm not trying to diminish the hard work Mm -hmm. you or other artists or myself have done. Because I've also been in that situation a million times where people they don't quite appreciate what you're doing with mm-hmm. art or they try and get work done for free because they think it's just some dumb hobby. Yes. You know, I mean, I've been insulted a million times. I hate when I'm drawing something in, in the middle of it. Someone goes, where's her nose? I said, it's not a stamp. <laughs> like you're a fucking idiot. Like, yeah, like yeah. to, like to it's make your point is yeah. I think there's more stupid, ignorant people out there right. than you could ever possibly imagine. Kill and them all. They're agreed. Yeah. Unforgiven. Napalm strike. Unforgiven. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do. And I'm not. I think a lot of people agree with you also where it's like this, not like to the nth degree of born just natural, but like where people are just like. And also, I think a big deal, which I didn't have, is like your environment with your mom. Mm-hmm. Like my mom wasn't. I mean, she's not not creative, but she wasn't doing any of that. Mm-hmm. Like maybe subconsciously from that young age growing up, you were just like internalizing some visual language that helped your first experiences and the positive experiences when you were young drawing and all your other shit, bro. It's freaking scary. You're wow. scary, dude. How much stuff you're good at. Can we move on? Sure. Great conversation though. <laughs> sure. Let's move on to how that, that exact perhaps framework. Do you think there's any similarity to that with comedy? All the, I think singing, drawing and comedy are all the exact same. Mm. Cause the process of an evolution of, Oh, I think and I think being an artist is just expression and the, the medium you choose to express yourself. But all of it comes from the same place. Mm. Drawing, singing, comedy, it's all from the stems from the same place. Because mm-hmm. um, I actually would think that, in my opinion, that there actually is like naturally born funny people. But that's different than trying to execute an hour special where you're just, it's a performance, right. it's surgical, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think people are most critical at comedy these days because they don't realize how difficult it actually is. Mm-hmm. So in other words, someone's going to look at your artwork and say, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like you have such a range of art and drawing and painting. <laughs> it's crazy that someone would look at you and be like, well, I can't do that mm-hmm. so they step down they have no room to criticize i mean they could say i don't like this color mm. but they certainly can't take away from the fact that you're talented same with singing we hear mariah or whitney and we're like well like i can't do that right comedy you see someone talk you go i can do that you're so right i was funny in my office i can do that but they don't that. understand how yeah. difficult i mean the, the art of comedy is disguising the difficult mm-hmm. the difficulty of making it seem like i'm comfortable yeah. or that it's the first time or the rhythm I speak in or holding a mic or telling a joke or writing a joke or structuring a joke. You know, it takes six months sometimes for a joke Mm. to work. Mm. Six months, Mm -hmm. maybe sometimes a year. And people just sit and think, oh, that was offensive because you said this word. I'm like, well, you're not, (laughs) you're not even like, you're, if someone criticizes comedy that way, like throws it off that easily, my reaction to them is you're simple. Yeah. (laughs) But that's just, I just clicked like everyone talks and tries to make jokes and they're funny with their friends. So when they see it on stage, it's like, oh, we all do that. That's so, I just never clicked. What do you think? Like, yeah, no, I've always thought of it like that. It's everyone thinks they could do it until they have people staring at them and they're like, oh, yeah. You know, no one, no one knows what to say. You know what I do sometimes? Like if someone in the audience is, heckling or trying to be funnier than the comic you know like think thinks they're helping the show i literally say well it's obvious that you think you're better and you want the attention so i'll give it to you so i put the mic in the stand Mm -hmm. and i sit down and i stare at them yeah and just and they think i'll be i'll be like like okay it's fine and i will sit i will sit i'm fine being uncomfortable i will lay down and sit and stare at them for a solid three minutes which is a long time to do well because i'm just curious because chris also manages another comedian podcast and he like is always with comedians, so I feel like, like you were saying, like it's this. You you agree, like the same sort of thing. Yeah. In terms uh, of I like, th- the also art think form. I have a different view on of it on it because I work with those people, but I don't think the normal people. Yeah. Yeah, I think people don't understand. Like, there's a lot of sacrifice into becoming a comedian, and uh, I don't think people quite they don't if they saw what comedians actually did, they mm-hmm. would probably be a lot more forgiving, mm-hmm. but they just don't 
they just don't get it. Yeah, you guys love. Fine. You guys love to complain though. Also, that's my favorite thing in the world. And I that's spent why I love four comedians. years at open mics at three a.m. with one person in the crowd. I'm just kidding. That's about right. I love comedy. I listen to yeah. so many podcasts, and like I, I'm a huge fan. And what do you think about? Because I th- I feel like this is a good thread that I want to keep pulling. What about stand up? Like those shows versus being a comedian on a podcast and like entertaining like that because you have your own podcast also right yeah me and emma wilman inside yeah. the closet um what's it called inside the closet I know what was it called uh i i don't mind that i think any way you want to express yourself is fine i'm not one of these comics like you must be okay, a comic yeah. by being on stage no it's i was like, trying to dif- differentiate like know. is is it different you know like it's very different well, I mean, it has to be. being a comedian on stage is different than anything you're not I mean that the, the only time I get upset is when people are like I'm a stand up comedian and then they don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I do a show every once every three months. I'm like, well, okay, please, just you know, yeah. cut it out. You yeah. know, but there's different types of comics. There's sketch comics. There's Instagram mm. comedy. There's um, improv. There's you know, there's so many different types. Like TikTok is awesome because you get so many people who would never have had the chance to otherwise express themselves. Like this one video of this kid. All you see is his hand and there's like a car and underneath the car is an icicle and he grabs the icicle and you just see his hand go, Oh, it's a wonder potter. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, it's- this yeah. is Voldemort's wand right here. Yeah, there you go. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. He was like, oh, with the tall wand. And I was like, that's funny yeah. because those are the moments. This is actually a great wand. Uh, yeah. This is one of those moments where you would see that in life and try and tell your friends and then you just do it on TikTok. Yeah, and it's funny. It is. Yeah. Like that. It's like the most personable like window into just like comedy with friends. Right. But right. also like there's like I know there's like guys who've blown up. I'm going to space on their name who have like did the comedy TikTok or Vine and now they're trying to transition into stand up. And like which I make, think is hard. I feel if like it's can, impossible. It, there's something about and, and people can do it. I'm not a hater either. No, me neither. I think like, I think I, I chop uh, props to you. But I do think you're you're more likely to have a, a um, you know, fi- doing comedy is not just about killing. It's about finding and understanding your voice, mm-hmm. your your perspective. And it's hard to do that when you're known when you're not known you're able to sort of play around and discover and see what works and see what doesn't. And you can fail anonymously. Mm -hmm. Once you become a name for something else and then try and do stand up, it's hard to do that. And I also, it's a little insulting that people think stand up so easy that they'll just do it. Who thinks that though? I feel like everyone's biggest fear also is like being on stage. Like in my mind, doing four minutes on like an open mic, trying to be funny is like, I'd rather lose my pinky or something. Honestly, you know, like, I, 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 I share it. that I, sentiment. I wouldn't do it. Well, I think there's some people who became very famous on Instagram or TikTok. And then, uh, you know, their agents say, well, now you should do shows. Mm-hmm. You can make money. And it, good, you should get a cash grab. You should get coin, you know. But then they're up there struggling. And it's kind of like, well, y- y- what did you think? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not going to turn around tomorrow and be like, uh, I don't know, be like a YouTuber. Yeah, everyone's not I don't like know how liking to. your stand up. It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I'm not against it. I think, you know, Me however neither. you want to express yourself. I think it's you hilarious. Should. I mean, I, I love Casey Frey on TikTok. You know, Casey Frey. I like the Saw dude guy. Oh, I got to follow. Anyways, anyways, just my friend like, Evan Williams is very famous on TikTok and he's very funny. Evan Williams. And it's all his own videos. I don't know stuff. if I know him. But that's awesome. Yeah, I'm not a hater. Also, I'm not a comedian, so I don't know why I'm trying to like give perspective. I don't care. I enjoy it. What about your transition? Because you were just saying that you loved art. You were so into it, storyboarding. You did this thing in Umbria. <laughs> what made you get into comedy from painting? And from what it seems, correct me if I'm wrong again, you kind of just stopped like hard body. Well, like, it was you burnt out. Yeah, because I remember when I graduated college, then it was a new hunt. I had to become an artist. Mm. And I remember like I emailed probably 70 people, people just out of the blue. Here's my portfolio. What do you think? Anything I could do, blah, blah, blah. And finally, I was at dinner with my friend Alex and her mom and her mom had worked in advertising. And I said, "Um, I'm trying to become a storyboard artist. And she was like, I know this guy who knows storyboard artists. He's in New York. If you fly out there, I'll give you a meeting with him. Called my friend Charlotte. She lived here, booked my ticket, flew out here, just met with him. He looked at my work and said, yeah, I can give you the number to this guy who does storyboarding. You have to build a new portfolio. So I spent two months building a whole new portfolio, just drawing TV commercials that I saw oh, wow. and then met with them. And they said, great, we can use you. I'll start putting you on stuff for like kids. I was the youngest person in my storyboarding 
a house. You know what I mean? Everyone was like 50 and retired and doing it for fun. I was 21 <laughs> being like, I'll draw the littlest pet shop commercials. I don't care. You know, and that moves you up. And then I started doing 7-Up and Lexus and all these big, you know, DSW and like doing all these like campaigns for people. And then I got a job um, drawing in New York for my friend Aaron's company. He's like, we need an artist. I can't do this myself. And you draw very quickly. So can we, will you move to New York in 30 days? Will we mm. give you a job as an artist? And I just said, sure. And at that time, I had just started doing stand-up in Chicago. Oh, really? So there was like a part of me that was like, oh, I could just do stand-up in New York. I got to a point where I was drawing all day, every day. And you just, like, the fire does go out. I mean, I was so tired of drawing for other people. I would look at my own work. As good as it was, I wasn't inspired by it. Yeah. I didn't care and anymore. And it was like the, it became an occupation rather than like the passion hobby, perhaps. Yeah. And then I started becoming obsessed with comedy yeah. and feeling rewarded Why? with comedy. It was an instant gratification. It wasn't so in my own solitude. It was a community. And I felt like I truly belonged to somewhere. I never felt connected to the art world or the gay world fully. And comedy is the first place I feel I truly belong. Are you like a competitive person? Like when you started doing it, you were interested and then were you like, okay, I want to become really good and really successful? Or was it more like, let me just like express myself in this new medium and have a good time, maybe a little both? I'm just curious about people. Because you have to kind of have that, I feel like. It's especially in, yeah. in comedy. Sorry to keep interrupting. No, 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 no. But like I, you have to be a murderer, I feel like, to have success. Am I wrong? Like, I feel like it's so competitive. It is competitive, but I wasn't. I didn't view it like I wanted to be better than everybody else. I just love, I love, this is going to sound so cheesy, but it's true. I love self-competition. I love putting, push, pushing myself mm -hmm. to its limit. That's like, yeah, it's like fine art. That's like the only thing. Yeah. But I, th I don't, I was never competitive. I, I have such good friends in comedy and we all love and support each other. And there's competitive aspects to it. Like how come that person got this or how come that person mm -hmm. got that? But um, I never thought of it that way i'm sure people thought about it, about it that way to me i would hear when i started becoming more known and getting things i remember a lot of guys would say oh well this is because he's gay they would mm, they would dismiss yeah. you because you're gay and it's like well i'm not less you know what I, I did feel competitive in the sense to prove myself because i'm gay people think it's easier or that i get stuff because i'm a i'm a quote unquote minority in comedy like a pity mm -hmm. like a pity play and I'm like, you know, I have to not only show up, I have to be funnier and I have like, there's so many things I have to do mm. to work harder to garner the same amount of respect as other people. Now I feel that I've earned it. Yeah. But there was a time where I felt like I was like a salmon going upstream. Like, mm. you know, it just, there was, a, how much can you talk about being gay on stage? How much should you not talk about being gay on stage? Is this too gay? Is this going to um, isolate your audience? Is this not universal enough? Are you going to talk about that? Don't expect, don't be the gay comic. Be a mm -hmm. comic, but be a comic who's gay. Oh, you do a comic like a man. Yeah. Oh, you do. It's like, there's so many things coming at you. Mm -hmm. And look, when I started doing stand-up, there was not a lot of gay or queer people for me to look at for guidance. I was just going to ask that. What year is this? Because like, you've been doing it for a while. but this, Ten years. So yeah, and see. ten years ago, the climate was a little different. Very, for sure. You I would promise better you. Than my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wildly different. I remember the only now. Then this is not to say gay people didn't exist, which is like Jim David and Rick Chrome and M Mario Cantone and stuff. But um, when I was doing open mics, just in the scene I was in, New York, the only people at first that I remembered that were also gay was just me and Tim Dillon. Wow! And it would be us two in the back of the room, and I still Tim and I have like a very special like when we see each other, like he just came to the cellar and we sat down away from everybody else and just caught up with each other because mm -hmm. we remember what it was like sure. being the only gays. Mm -hmm. And I love Tim Dillon. And then I, and then I met Frank Liotti and then Joel Kambooster moved to New York. And Joel, if you've not seen him, is just phenomenal. So you're home you do the sketches with? Who, which Joel? sketches? Which sketches? I don't know. I thought I saw like some sketches on your Instagram. Not like it's drawing sketches, but like, Oh. video comedy sketches no I maybe i'm mistaken maybe but Sorry. if you if you joel is is one of those he's another one it's like he does comedy he acts he writes he's good looking mm -hmm. like then um julio torres so a lot of other comics who were gay or queer started popping up cola scola john early you know it's like 
it was all, and I, this is not me saying I was the first. It was just when I started realizing there were other queer people around me. Because when you, when I started, I was just at the creek in the cave. And so I wasn't seeing where anybody else was. So, you know, I remember the first time seeing John early. We were both at a show and I was, I was laughing so hard. It was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I was embarrassing myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, but at very first, those few that want, there was like a year in New York where I was just doing open mics and it was a lot of straight people. I remember feeling like, oh my God, it's just me and Tim. Yeah, that was crazy. And Tim and I didn't feel competitive. First of all, we're very different. Yeah. The funniest thing I remember, we were at an open mic and Tim <laughs> got up on stage and goes, we're in the basement of the creek on a Friday. And Tim is like, I just want everyone to know Here's how well my career is going. Next week, I'm going to see Mateo Lane on Chelsea Lately talking about Miley Cyrus, and I'm going to be hanging dead from the George Washington <laughs> Bridge. <laughs> That's funny. I love, yeah. And now he's mm. one of the biggest in the game right yes. now. So, so he did this. I was in so Provincetown, and I, and I was listening to his podcast, and he was talking about this. Uh, he found this um, fat activist. And he just dissected that. Oh, I mean, God. and only Tim Dillon could do it. Yeah. It was, he's so funny. King of the rants. Yes. I yes. watch his podcast a lot. I think he's great. <laughs> and I love when he's on other people's podcasts. Oh, yeah. I love, that's what it's weird for me. It's like, I love a select, a lot of comedians, but I love when they're on other people's shows. Yeah. Because it feels like it, they're a little more coming out. They're not as comfortable. I don't know what it is, but it's like, there's something about it that, Comedians on their people. I'm just like, I can't get it. It's enough. like seeing your favorite superheroes hang out with, like, why is Superman with Batman? Exactly. This exactly. Isn't, they shouldn't be with each other, yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. But to answer your question, I just lost. I kind of feel sad. I haven't, like, I can't quite relight the fire for drawing. And my skills are at their peak. I yeah, we should bring your, I mean, we're going to do hopefully painting later. But yeah, that first night at the drawing session it was like amazing. I mean, it's, it, I think it's like, you lose practice, but it's like riding a bike and you could just get it. But do you think now that you're not doing it as a career, like you could, it could like re flourish the passion and you could draw for fun and enjoyment? You do the iPad sketches and you do that. I do that on planes just to pass time. Right. And so, so that's I like maintaining the practice. It's for maintaining sure. the practice. Yeah. And I, I do, I do drawings that kept me happy as a kid. So like X Men, Predator, all Disney, the Jafar, yeah, all Maleficent. The, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know when it will come back. Yeah, I don't know. I did the last thing I did that really fueled me was uh, a cartoon with my friend Bob the Drag Queen. We did a cartoon together called Kick Ass Drag Queen, and I spent like weeks doing all these drawings to get this cartoon and da da. And then it's like the flame burnt out again. Oh, really? I don't know. I I I don't know how I'll get back to it. Yeah, singing I'll never get tired mm -hmm. of to the day I die. Never. Drawing, maybe I just did too much. Yeah, that might be really it. Like in terms of you burn it out. Maybe one day it will come back. I have visions like you to but just like, live do you, in you Italy don't want it come back like you don't want to like do you want to make money from it or just like you just in terms of doing it like all just the time. Doing it. Yeah, I, I feel I, like you're doing it. Like there's nothing to come back. No, I miss the days of sitting alone at my kitchen table when everyone else was going to bed and I was just drawing, listening to music. Oh god. Oh, I just I just miss those days. We're going to do some painting today. Great. I haven't done an oil painting in I don't know how long. Yeah, and it's going to be it's so fun. Well, we'll see. I was thinking, I don't know if this would ever work in like reality because it just might be logistically too hard. But like a, a, an idea I had for a show, not a show, or like another podcast situation would be like, say you. It's like I would do a portrait of you and it would be like an interview. Mm while doing the portrait but i don't know it might be too many balls in the court i don't think so i think they'd be fascinating but it'll be kind of fun yeah I think but it's just be also great. hard and also i'd be nervous that i wouldn't do a good job and then i'm like, i'm up. more <laughs> impressed by you than i think i have been by anyone in a long time oh. i'm not blowing smoke up your ass but keep going because Why? it's a lot it's so <laughs> it's so hard to not just make as an artist like me trying to work for somebody else but to work for yourself and then use the medium of youtube and all this other stuff to really elevate yourself so that you can do art as much as you want yeah. i mean you're the dream i didn't get there i was i was a a worker bee for somebody else mm -hmm. you know i wasn't able to like step out on my own um so that might be why your flame keeps going is because it's it's your yeah. world yeah because that's 
thank you, first of all, and I'm very lucky, but it, I think that's part of it. And in, I always tell people the videos, because like I'm as much as Chris knows, like a production, videography, photography mm. nerd mm -hmm. as like painting, and I might even do it more. Mm. I might edit and vid do video more than I actually paint, but they're hand in hand in the same perpetual cycle and they help each other. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I feel like I never get creative block. It's always fun. There's always new projects where I could focus on other things. But like you were saying, like, I'm not at that point now, but it's especially this last year, like painting and then filming, it's become so much the job now. Mm. Like you have to get things out. You got deadlines, you got brand deals, blah, 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 that it's like, it's sucking my soul out of my it's, rectum, it's you know, the Medici and it's, thing. it's, it's like, killing me a little. Can art exist without money? And it's so, it's like, it is the balance. And let's be honest, money is the thing that works. Like I have a business now that's like super important for all of these things. And I don't think it's ever possible. I always think back, like these are really, really old, like 2017. And mm. back then it was like the most raw creative passion, no money involved. No one was telling me what to do. I was just in my old studio, amped to the fucking 11, just like excited about a project. And I just did it. That was the only reason. Now I still have that fire, you know, maybe like you do for like a new special or something, but like there is still no matter what now, other little things involved, money, yeah. strategy, business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's like, well, it's the balance. I mean, you've done something that's hard to do. You've balanced being a businessman and an artist. Yeah. That's not easy to do because we know artists. Mm -hmm. We're lazy and we do lots of drugs and we don't like authority. So the fact that... Speak for yourself, man. Do, do you know what I mean? Though? I love cops it's and like, don't like drugs. <laughs> no, you know, okay. it's, we live a lifestyle that allows us to not play to the script, yeah. essentially. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. So when you're given that much freedom... Mm -hmm. You know what? What kind of sacrifices do you want to make? So you've yep. done a very, really, you've done a very smart thing by balancing your art world and your business world. Even in a way, I'm doing that with comedy. It's like I get so much joy out of a new joke. Mm -hmm. Like when I get a new joke and I get that laugh, it, can't imagine. It, oh, fuels you. You're like, we talk about a drug. I can't imagine. Oh that. yeah, of course. And then I, I can't wait to go home and edit it and mm. put it together. And all same thing. Then mm -hmm. it's like, well, I got to put it on TikTok. I got to put it on Instagram. I got to make sure I'm selling shows. I got to make sure. You know, and so then you start feeling that pressure again. So that you're, you know, um, I think sort of going back to what you're saying also is I think you probably are in a better situation than I was because you are surrounded in a community of different artists all the time. Mm -hmm. And mine became more isolating. Mm -hmm. When I mm -hmm. left art school, I left my community mm -hmm. and it was just mm -hmm. me. So I didn't have the artists to sit around and talk about you prefer Venetian red or Alizarin crimson? You know what I mean? I didn't have Alizarin all the way. Oh, never. Yeah, for me. Venetian red. Alizarin, I these transparent. The, get, I love get out it. Of here. Cold red, baby. But cadmium red, medium, or cadmium red light, and cadmium yellow light mm -hmm. are my favorite colors. What about colors. vermilion? Um, vermilion just like a little less chroma cad red. I don't prefer it. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. I just. I, I feel I, like it's very traditional color. Well, I also like Naples yellow. I don't have that. Yeah, but I, I've never used it. But that's like similar to ochre. I feel like Naples is just a little. I, I started know. using it a little bit of a cheat, but I liked that. I'm so excited scene. for you to pick the, your palette because we're going to have to work fast. My, my palette will be titanium white, mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. No, actually no black. Okay. I have a black. Um, raw umber, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, uh, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow uh, light. Um... All, uh, ultramarine blue mm -hmm. and uh, uh, viridian. Uh, okay, I don't have viridian. And yellow ochre. I don't have viridian. And you'll you'll see it. I got a wide selection. Can you believe I still remember that? I know, that's great. But that's the thing. It's like oil colors. Like That's something I feel like people don't get. And I'm about to nerd out so hard. Please, this is all I want to talk about. But like oil painting, mixing colors with oil is, th is the color. Like yes. it's the final frontier of color. And when people get acrylic paint, like from the store and they buy the blue, it's like you're, you're, you're playing checkers, you know, like you're singing to my soul. <laughs> oil paint and mixing oil paint is what color theory is. Yeah. There's, there's, there is fundamental colors within that language. Like we were just talking about. That's why when people say those sorts of colors, you know that they understand what's going on. My heart is swelling. Because there's transparent, there's opaque. Like yes. you need to know these. Yes. And that's why I love it. 
And that's why, like, it's fucking crazy, dude. And, like, I love oil painting because it's, like, it's just like anything. Comedy, whatever, camera equipment, fashion. You could get to the nth degree of nuance, and it's really exciting. And, obviously, every master expert and everything knows those. But with oil painting, there's so much nuance to everything. Color theory, paint application, you know, even just visually like your observation skills like it's very fun and that's just me right? no it's, like, i love this yeah you're like singing to me yeah no what's your um, least favorite color because my least favorite color to paint with is purple i, hate I don't use purples. like a quinacrinone magenta or something <gasps> yeah you want to know a cool fact about quinacrinone magenta mm. chemically there is no trace of yellow so qu quinacrinone magenta is technically the farthest possible color from yellow. Interesting. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is cool. I don't know the science. No. I'm just a kid and life is a nightmare, yeah. but I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> um, least favorite color? Like in painting. I don't use green much. I like, I will mix a green. Yeah. Um, so, I, I dislike, like none of these paintings are green because I just don't use green. But like in oil in portraits, there's a lot of green. So I lots use of, green. Like when people would yeah. shave, there's lots uh -huh. of greens in, the, in these um, areas. In the, uh, can you bring up the sergeant? picture chris i don't know if you'll remember that one the one that i said that we both did that has a bunch of beautiful green mm -hmm. in the uh the very light gray green yeah exactly Ooh, i'm just, excited for you to hear you talk about my work well we pulled up a couple just we have a couple old ones oh look at us look at sergeant is that your yep that's it so yeah like his beard and that's what people don't get i mean even in skin tone i don't know if you know like this zone theory i i learned this uh, like very recently but i love it where it's like generically like forehead above the brow is more yellow mouth to like nose and cheek is like more red and then below the mouth is like a cooler color and mm. that kind of if you do it in paint it just represents like the life the vitality of like a living thing more but i've i learned that and i never forgot that not that this one has it but you can I, even see a little like yeah that. this is i was just on procreate messing around i like doing Portraits. I've done a bunch of Sargent portraits on Procreate just yeah. to sort of keep my oil painting in my mind, oil painting skills alive. But um, that's awesome, dude. I mean, it's thanks. great. And I loved how soft it is. Like the soft edges is like just so gorgeous. Thanks. Yeah, I had fun. I remember drawing this on my friend Mark and mine's futon. Oh, futon. Mm -hmm. Nice signature. Also, yeah. Let's switch sure. around. I bought. I, like, want to go to those old ones, Chris? Remember from the bottom. Because this was just d deep diving. This is more illustration. Oh, Maria Callas. Like, well, that's gorgeous, man. That's just a sketch of my favorite opera singer. Is that on paper or is that on digital? This is, I think, on paper. Because that is just crazy. These are gorgeous. so old. But, like, look at those line Oh, yeah, quality. that's for sure. That was, in my, that was in my comic. I was drawing. Mm -hmm. I was at an open mic. And so I was writing in really? my notes. And then I just drew Gambit. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I had it. Oh, that's above my bed. That's a Joaquin oh, really? Soroya yeah, painting. Soroya. I love that painting. And this is, you could tell, all prima. And I, it's huge, and I did it in is an it hour big? and a half. Yeah, it's, about, it's almost the size of that. Wow, that is massive. And I did it I did it so quickly. I remember I was in art school. I was in Dan Gustin's figure painting class, and I, we, were just, we, we were always given assignments to do master studies, mm -hmm. and I was late on my master study, and I, I literally did this, I, would, I mean, maybe two hours. I whipped. That's how skilled I was at that time. That's that crazy. I was whipping out yeah. Joaquin Soroy as in two hours. I mean, that's crazy. I love that painting. Oh, this was a fun one. I did a, a quick sketch of a old Sicilian man. <laughs> I, yeah, I just love the skin tone. And I was really into doing a, sort of a loose sketch and then having like a hard line around him. Yeah, like yeah, like a uh, like an outline, but that's more an abstract outline. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the Hulk. This that's is just. This, like beautifully rendered. I was like, what the fudge buckets? I was bored at work. And when I was bored at work, I would do these drawings, my favorite superheroes. And so I would Google like, okay, the Hulk, right? And I'd find a drawing I liked and then draw it. Some other artists did a similar drawing. It's not, I mean, I did my own take of it. And I don't remember their name and I wish I could credit them. But I was drawing off someone else's sketch, bored at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, I love this one. I just love the composition of this and the colors. Like it... Almost no shading in the face, but you could still see so much form. Is, is what I what I'm saying. Yeah, this drawing is fashion illustration to a fucking T. This is like. <laughs> Can you tell us why? Because I you pick a silhouette that you really really like, uh -huh. and 
go bold. So I didn't want to ruin the shape of the of the. I love the hand mm-hmm. yeah. and the shape of the sort of baggy sleeve. If I had started rendering it with shadows and mm-hmm. lights, I would have lost what I liked most about this. So I wanted this to be as close as I could to like an old ink drawing or like mm-hmm. a comic book from the 1940s. So I just did her. I drew her body. And then only render her face with a little bit of cheek to give definition. Yep, yep. And then everything was a flat, yeah, it's just hot, hot pink. Yeah. Loved doing this the drawing are so beautiful, much. beautiful, yeah. Yeah, the hands. I love drawing hands. Those hands are, I mean, I suck at hands. You, I avoid them pretty do much. Do you really? I pretty much avoid them because oh. I'm so bad. You I just, just recently, did one. Yeah, I just did one. But like I, I... I wish I had more drawings to show you guys. I know. I should have brought up more... I can. Your I website's can sh- lacking. Your website has like seven photos. No, go to mattlaneart.com. No, I did. I have a whole thing. I thought I only saw like six. No. I scoured your Instagram more. Oh, I'll show These are all my old stuff, though. You can just sort of blow, blow through these if you want. I hate that one. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, these I like. Is this, this for work? This or was is this for work. For, because like, that's crazy. We had to draw. We were doing an office compliance computer game, and we had to draw offices and then like characters within them and then each item was supposed to be interactive so then i just drew new york city in the background so i could kind of use it for all the rest of the background Mm -hmm. i had so much fun drawing these because i loved the sort of like flat inky look it is yeah i loved doing these i mean they're boring but as an artist i was like i love no they're not that boring they're so like there's so much little detail which is the like even like through the windows i've never done stuff like this and I loved doing this. I, I love this. I saw this. I this. loved. Yeah. This is this I loved because this was um when I started storyboarding, I got a bunch of uh, my art director sent me a bunch of three hundred, uh, the movie three hundred, all their mm-hmm. um, like what is it? The sketches, art, like uh, concept uh, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. So I started just doing my own versions of their concept art to you know twenty twelve for real. Yeah, that was 2012. That was yeah, crazy. you're blowing through these. You gotta slow down. <laughs> All right, go 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 to the next one. That you can go to the next one. Uh, Chris! Yeah, sh- stay here, stay here. Yeah, let me talk about sorry, it. Sorry. Um, I'm like, and this one was that one. <laughs> this was in my. I was. I love this. this would have been. I would have been 20 years old. But I had a scientific illustration class with a, a teacher named Peggy McNamara. Zoology. Who I love. And kind of, we, they were all, they're all taxidermied animals. Whoa. And we had a seven hour class and we would sit and draw From the life. animals. Yeah. Whoa. That's loved, awesome. Love filled my notebook up yeah. with all these. You can go to the next one. I did a gorilla, I think. And it, this is one of my favorite. Oh, that's a hyena. Oh, that's not right. <sighs> this one I love. Yeah. You can kind of zoom up on it, but I just Terrific. sat there. I mean, there's a lot of detail in this one, but I remember sitting there. Oh, I loved that storm. I forgot about her. <laughs> I entered a competition to do new storm costume and I lost. They hated it. So that's new. That's like concept off for storm. That was 2013. Yes, or that's something. badass. I haven't looked at these in so long. Ah, <laughs> this is my friend. This is I loved this. This is my friend Frank. Rich. My friend Frank and I were really, really good friends in college and still good friends today. And uh, at the time, at that time, Frank was uh, going by Aaron. And so I painted him and said, "I want to draw you like with a really." long neck and him and i to this day one of the few people i find like we both have synesthesia we Mm -hmm. both love art we both love music Mm -hmm. we both drew very similarly we had a lot in common and we would i just love i love frank i I think the world of him and we saw each other maybe a couple years ago and it was like instantly we were back love it friends sit and draw we we make jokes about pokemon and sleeping beauty and disney movies and (laughs) Love, 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 love him. Love that painting. This was a painting I did with my friend Matt Whiting. And he we bought, I'll never forget, we bought a bunch of pieces of cake, like uh, what's his face? Um Thibaut or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh I remember buying it at Whole Foods, and the lady goes, Why are you guys buying so much cake? And we said, We're gonna be painting it. And she goes, You're painting with the cake. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, like, you're an idiot. Some kinky stuff you, going on. Yeah. Like you fucking <laughs> you idiot. idiot. That's now in my brother's apartment. But I remember, That's a gorgeous one. I like that. I don't do still lifes a lot. I, you learn a lot in still life because I know. You, you actually, when you do paintings, you're fighting more about your idea of what a person looks like. And there's a mental battle happening from your memory and your idealization of what a human looks like versus what's actually happening mm-hmm. in front of you. When you're drawing a cake, you don't care. Yeah. You're just drawing a cake. You don't yeah. have an emotional it becomes attachment to and- it. 
just shapes yeah. and you're less afraid to make a mark and yeah. it's less you know this, if, you, if you want to go to my storyboards i or fashion illustrations or storyboards they're pretty interesting whichever which do you prefer chris your call chris is the captain now these i had real fun doing oh yeah these are gorgeous these are like this was like i'm most comfortable doing fashion illustrations see like i love this style but i don't really like drawing digitally but i would love to do like this in this sort of style you know like very like beautiful pur purposeful shapes to define like that that thing in the hat mm. it's like it's so simple it's like so nice to look at yeah and i love that it's all still freehand i love is it that's crazy oh all this is freehand yeah that's crazy i don't praise this i love long neck this was similar to my Maria Callas. I think I was drawing them I at think the same I time. I think she's in here. She is there. This yeah. was, if, uh, if you click next, there she is. Ooh. My favorite drawing of all time. And Can I got, you show the tattoo to the yes, and, tattoo cam? Yes. And the, the um, swag. It's amazing that yellow is still like good. I know. Isn't yellow the hardest color to stay? Yes. <laughs> and you were like, I was like, give I, it to me. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. I drew this when I first moved to New York, and I promised myself that I would. She's my favorite artist of all time. Maria Callas is to me. The what great. art does she do? I'm sorry she, if that's she, ignorant. She was an opera singer. Oh, okay. But she was, she was someone who was, I think, the talent within her was so great. It actually was hard for her, like, human body to function with it. She died early. Mm. But Whoa. to me, she's like Michelangelo. Mm. That scale of an artist and so this like three quarter pro it's like a little more it's almost the pro like the side profile but i love that you could see her eyelash like and the the scale of her cranius yeah it rounds her out doesn't yeah, it i like it a lot thank you this is my favorite drawing i've ever done and it's the only tattoo i'll ever get oh well not not when you leave here <laughs> i want to know now that we've talked about all of these sorry i feel like my eye your art is so beautiful yeah <laughs> <laughs> um like you you ran out of the bug, perhaps you said, of the art. Now mm -hmm. you're deep into comedy. Mm -hmm. Do you have ideas of the future? Like, do you have de desires of some new outlet? Like, you do so much. You have so much talent oozing from the pores of your body. Like, do you, are you thinking forward anything else in the framework? Is it doing some so sort of show? I know you did the Janice and Jeffrey. Like, is that another outlet that's really fun that maybe you want to go into? I'm just really curious because you're such a talented person. I have such a creative crush on you. Oh, well, th oh, thank you. Well, let's be I honest. Wish, um, I, I would like my hour special, but I also would like, because I do a monthly concert show at Joe's Pub where it's a mm. I know that's coming of, up soon, right? I just yeah, saw that. and you guys should come, please. Oh, we'd love it, to. It is sold out, but I will get you really? tickets. Yeah, I sold out in an hour and a half. You freaking owe me, Isn't man. Isn't that crazy? But I will <laughs> but 100% get you tickets. Uh, we would love to go. Um, Which is the most... Uh, that show I do with my friend Henry Kapersky, who's an, ama an amazing uh, musician, and it's like a live podcast, and we talk. Joe, everything's improvised, and Is then it? I okay. sing. Wow. It goes from very emotional to very funny to very fun. Wow! Um, I'd like to see that also become a special, and I just want to be able to keep working creatively mm. and working with creative people. I sold my my comic book with Bob the Drag Queen. We finally sold it. Hell yeah! So we just had our preliminary writing with the show uh, store um, showrunner yesterday. That's so awesome! So I'm excited to go on to that. Wait, a comic that's going to turn into a show? Yeah, we had our what? Instagram comic book and sold it. So now it'll be a cartoon show. What is it called again? Sorry. Kick-Ass Drag Queen. Kick-Ass Drag Queen. You said that before. Wow, that's so epic. I'm going to have to get that comic book. It's on. It's just on Instagram. Oh, okay. Okay, so it was like a series. But that's so crazy. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. So does that? that's like obviously a huge project that you're going to be involved with moving forward. Yeah, but I my, my main focus right now is just stand-up. I tried mm. doing all this other stuff to please other people, and it always seemed to kind of not work. And so once I was talking to Andrew Schultz, and he was like, before I did it, Andrew and I have been friends forever, but mm -hmm. before I did his podcast, I had like had a show that I was writing with these writers that my agent and manager were like, you have to write a show about your life. And we did all of our pitching and it didn't happen. And then I was going to try and do this thing, didn't happen. And I was auditioning, didn't happen. And I just felt so out of control mm -hmm. of my own career. Mm -hmm. I call, I texted Andrew when I was in Italy and said, can I just pick your brain? He was like, let's talk tomorrow. He talked to me on the phone for like an hour and a half was like, take control of your own life, post your own things, be in control of your own projects. Don't let anybody else take it away from you. And since I've been doing that, then he brought me on his show, which literally changed my entire career.
career. Really? I'm not kidding you. Doing his show was I got I got twenty thousand followers from his episode in a day. Yeah, it it changed my life, and I keep texting him that I'm like Andrew, you've changed my life, That's and he's so like, awesome. no, 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 yeah. and um. I now post all of my own stuff on my Instagram mm-hmm. and I it, it's uh, in six months, a hundred thousand followers sold out shows, yeah. this and that. And it's like, yeah. wow, I, I, now I don't care about auditioning and stuff. Totally. I'm, I'm driving the car. Right. Yeah. So I feel way more empowered and li- literally I can only thank Andrew Schultz. Well, he was a piggyback, but I mean, I was just going to say, I don't, I don't want to keep raining, but like, have you ever bombed? Like I feel like Oh yes. I feel like it's impossible. Yes, like yes. we we were watching your stand up but like you're so freaking funny. Like it's oh, undisputed. Thanks. thanks. Um yes. And like I you're a, not even the comedy. Like I feel like you're such a natural performer. Like I feel like there's even things with I don't want to go on a ramp. Like musicians like having just like the bedside manner of talking to the crowd in between songs like just controlling the stage presence like Anyways, but that's awesome. That's I think exciting. I thank my aunt Cindy for that. Thanks, Cindy. Literally, yeah, she's like my comedy inspiration, kind of. That's awesome. Yeah, but I don't know. I've I've bombed plenty of times. Okay, yeah, I'm sure, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just trying to say like, I appreciate it. it. Yeah, it's amazing, and we would love to go to the show. That would be so yeah. Sick. Please just text me. You guys can come. We'll get you tickets. It'll be fun. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. It's comedy and singing. Yeah, that's crazy. I so it's like it. you're full blown. It's like your act. Yeah, it's the antithesis of a cabaret show where you go in, there's someone who's like, and then I moved to New York. Start spreading the news. You know, we we do not go there. You know, we are, it's, it's, it's not like, a one man show. No, no. We, I go up on stage and I'm like, it's just all improvised. We're just chatting. I'm chatting with the audience. It's, yeah. a, it's like a, a big conversation and celebration. Hell yeah. That's I'm sweet. so happy that I got to do this show. Dude, I'm so happy you're here. And then we're going to also, for people listening, the couple tens of people listening, we're going to do a portrait session. So Mateo's going to paint me. And we'll have fun with it. Make well, I have all these costumes. You can dress me up. We're only going to do an hour, but it's going to be really exciting. So check that out. That will probably be on the main channel in the next year or two sometime <laughs> in the future. But thanks for coming on, man. Thanks it was for really having nice me. of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye.